Hi guys and praise the Lord. I am delighted and I hope you're well. You have heard a common phrase that no man is an island. And this is a simple phrase that people have never thought about. But in the real sense, nobody is an island and nobody can make it alone. You need your friend around. But have you ever asked yourself the role your friends can play in your life. So join me as we talk about peer pressure. So call somebody who is just near you and let's have a chat. Before that, I want us to read a verse together. First Corinthians 15 verse number 33. The Bible says, Do not be deceived. Bad company collapse good morals. That is the Bible. When we talk about peer pressure, people hear peer pressure and they think about it in a negative way. But peer pressure can be either positive or negative. But just before that, let us ask ourselves, what is peer pressure? In simple definition, peer pressure is influence of behavior caused by someone or a group that you interact with. That is all about peer pressure. That behavior that is formed or is prompted by your close associate. So I talked about positive and negative peer pressure. Positive peer pressure is when somebody influences your character in a positive way. While negative peer pressure is when someone influences your character, your behavior in a negative way. Therefore, peer pressure is either positive or negative. But now, simply because we have said that no man is an island, what are we supposed to do? Well, you need to vet the type of friends that you make. We have had perfect friendships in the Bible. You remember the friendship of David and Jonathan? These were people who helped each other. They walked with each other in thick and thin. You have, I know you know about the friendship of uh, Ruth and Naomi and the friendship between Jesus and his close disciples. That is uh, Peter, John, and James. So, Unfortunately, or fortunately, you cannot live without friends. But you have to choose the type of friends that you are going to have. So, let us ask ourselves, how do you choose friends? So, guys, this is a criteria of choosing your friends. Number one, the first criterion of a Christian to choose a friend is choosing a friend who fears God and who pays respect to the things of the Spirit. Somebody who is in God will never lead you to ungodliness. So if you have a friend who do not fear God, then he is going to lead you into ungodliness. And uh, there's a verse in Amos 3.3. 3. It says, Two cannot, walk alone, uh, two cannot walk together unless they agree. So what does a sheep has to do with dogs? This must be a game of hide and seek. So if you have a friend who does not fear God and you fear God, are you still encouraging yourself that this walk will materialize? Are you still sure about the end results? So the best thing and the safest friendship is having friendship with people who respect God. Number two, choose friends who share the same values as you do. A true friend should help you strengthen your values. Proverbs 27 verse number 17, as an iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens another. So is your friend sharpening you? Or is he making you worse? 
So walk with people who you share the same values to strengthen them. If you have had a weakness in school, they should strengthen you. If you have had issues with life, they should be part of you. They should walk with you and strengthen your value. Walk with people who believes in your beliefs. Somebody who encourages you and understands you. That's what I'm talking about. Values. Somebody who is ready to cultivate your vision until you get to it. Number three. Choose a consistent friend. A friend who will be there through thick and thin. True friendship will stand the test of time. Have you found these type of friends? Who will be with you when you are celebrating? And when you are crying, they are nowhere to be found. Unfortunately, those people, you can never understand them by the look of their face. Hypocrisy is not written on faces. So walk with a friend who is always with you in times of problems and in times of goodness. A, fr a friend who gives you a shoulder to lean on. The last thing about how you choose your friend, choose a friend who tells you the truth. Have you seen these kind of friends? Who will encourage you and cheer you up as you enter into a pit? Have you seen them? Friends who will cheer you up when they know that after a few meters you're going to face your death. And many a times we tend to love them simply because they don't tell us the truth. But I tell you, walk with friends who tell you the truth, either painful or not. Those are the true friends. But when you realize that you have a friend who cheers you up every day and never encourages I mean never challenges you, then I don't think he is worth keeping. So the last thing is why do you need friends? We have said no man is an island. Why do you need friends? Number one, you need someone to share your joy and happiness. How do you feel when you have the warmth of friends, when you have a birthday party? It becomes quite good. It becomes cheerful. You feel motivated. So you need friends to share your joy and happiness. There is that warmth that comes when you have friends. How do you feel when you feel low and a friend just comes in and hugs you? Eh? You feel good. You feel the warmth. So you need friends. Number two. You need someone to cheer you up in times of sadness. Seasons comes and change. Seasons comes and goes. And seasons are not the same. So at times you may find yourself in great sadness and distress. So when you have friends closer, you're not like somebody who is walking alone. Friends encourages you when you feel down. When you feel low, they give you the energy to move on with life. Number three. Friends gives us a form of challenge in life. For example, if someone dresses well or her hair looks quite smart, I know you admire that not coveting, you admire. And maybe sometimes you even tell them, you look smart. But in the real sense, it's a challenge. And many times you say, wow, I think I'm going to try her style. So when you are alone, you may not have anything to compare yourself with. And I don't want to take you that point in a negative way. But look at people who gives you challenge. Again, a friend may tell you, these days you're not working like before. So you tend to think about what has changed in your life and you try to rectify that. So friends gives us a challenge. Somebody may tell you, wow, you look quite big. This is not how you have been. I can see you are eating. And deep inside you tell yourself, ah, this was not the agreement. I think I, I promised myself to keep fit. So you wake up early in the morning 
simply because somebody gives gave you a challenge so that's what i'm saying friends are good to give you a challenge so the last thing on this is why a teenager must take care i must be very careful why choosing the inner circle of friends why do you need to be very careful when you are choosing close circle of friends before you take anyone for a friend you need the keenness of a surgeon in an operation theater why number 1 we are in our formative stages this is when your life is taking formation or else in the language you're going to understand this is the time maisha yako inapata form the real formation so if this is the time our life is gaining formation then we must be extra careful because it is the formation that uh, really dictates the foundation of the life of a teen so be very careful because if the foundation is not firm then the whole building and when i talk of building i'm talking about the whole of your life may be at risk so be very key so the last portion on this we want to ask ourselves why a teenager must be very careful when choosing his close circle of friends when before you take anyone as a friend you need the keenness of a doctor in an operation room why if you see a regretting grandmother it is as a result of irresponsible young girl if you see a regretting grandfather it is as a result of irresponsible young boy and this is the time when you are choosing your friends that's why you need the keenness of a doctor in an operation theater so why we are in our formative stage formation stage formation stage means this is when your life is gaining foundation you are in the foundation part of your life so if the foundation is weak the whole building is at risk and when i talk of building in this case i'm talking about your life hello so you are in a building in construction and this is your foundation stage if you mess it up then your life will take the whole course as a messed up stuff hello number 2 this is the exploration stage we want to discover new ideas at times teenagers find themselves exploring everything including everything in the process of exploration if you don't have close friends who are leading you in the right direction then you might end up messing up you know most girls explore about the dangers of pregnancy when they are already pregnant most boys figure out about pregnancy when they have already impregnated a girl but remember what i told you that we should be rational thinkers people who think about the end in the beginning not thinking about the end in the end so be a rational thinker think about the consequences of anything before you take a step number 3 there are decisions that you might make in life that are able to incapacitate you the whole of your life what am i saying The life of a teenager is like a wet cement. When you make a mark on the wet cement, when it dries up, it costs you dearly to delete the mark. So there are some decisions that you might make today that will cost you the whole of your life. There are some decisions you can make today 
that will make you regret until the time you die. Before it is too late, do something. Before you suffer harm, please curb harm. Hello? And the parents who are busy talking about all these things, please pay a listening ear. The last thing, this is the time that a teenager is expected to make important decisions in life. This is the time. So good friends help us make good decisions. Bad friends, of course, they make us make irrational decisions. Decisions that are not well calculated of. So my dear brother and sisters, I beseech you as your senior brother, make good decisions. Choose right friends. I want to conclude by telling you this. Take charge before you're discharged. I miss you and uh, I hope you're coming here soon. God bless you and be with you.